Tonight I'm going to show you the basics of connecting a Petronix F100A to a network controller. In the commercial situations you'd normally have a network card, but there is another acceptable solution to connect your panel to a PC or a network. This port down the bottom here is an RS-232 port. This is used for programming the uh, panel, but it can also be used for monitoring functions. That is the port we'll be using tonight to program and just view the live events of this panel. To start off with, we need to connect the panel to the computer, so we'll need a cable to do that. Something to keep in mind with the Petronix panel is you will need a null modem cable. What this is in a nutshell is a crossover cable, essentially. So it swaps the data pins around. Uh, there's different kinds of null modem cables, but this is just a basic switching null modem cable. If you don't have one of these, you're not going to have any luck connecting to the panel. So we'll plug this in to the port. And I like to silence alarms just to be, just to be safe. But it, it wouldn't set it off. So that cable is going down into a network enabled PC. So now we can come over to another computer. Now if you're going to connect this just straight to a computer, it's the same technique. So we'll open up the relevant software for your panel. There are three different software configuration uh, utilities that I've used so far. 5.14, 3.24 and the older one which is 2.42. If you need any of these files and you're a fire alarm technician in New Zealand, you just need to visit the Petronix website and call up Petronix and ask them for a password. We'll launch the software now. I'm using 5.14. And we can try connect to the panel. At the top here, you can see it's offline. So we need to connect. Now I'm not going to show the password I type in, but... Okay. And since we're connecting over the network, we will go IP connection and then connect. And hopefully, if we have any luck, connection to F100 successful. The first thing the software brings up is a complete mimic of the panel. So this is uh, showing everything that the panel itself is showing. So if, you, if I take off silence alarms, you'll see that silence alarms turns off. If I isolate the door holder and auxiliary, you'll see those lights turn on on the side there and off. Okay, we'll silence alarms again and I want to show you a really cool function with the 5.14 software. Okay, first of all we need to download the panels configuration. You can do this by going to the config arrow at the top and it will start downloading the panels configuration. This doesn't take too long, it should take less than a minute to download. And you can see over on the panel, sending configuration to PC. And you can see the RS-232 activity lights flashing away there. It's always a good idea to back up these files if you are programming a panel. Always make backups of every version you program. Okay, so you can see my system uh, at this point in time has 11 detectors and 13 modules. If we go down to expand loop 1 here, you can see uh, a tree view of all the devices on the system. So a majority of my modules are a loop responder. And the rest are smoke alarms, 11 smoke alarms. Okay, what I wanted to show you tonight mainly was a cool live smoke alarm monitoring tool. So if we go to my bedroom here, that's device one. You can see a list there of all the different uh, locations. Right click and get device status. You can see a live view of the smoke alarm status. So how much smoke is in the chamber essentially. It'll take a while for it to load up here. We'll go into our 3D view for added effect. And you can see the screen bar here is your PW value. So that's the value that the smoke alarm is outputting. This is a fresh air value. So this is what the detector should be showing. So you can see I keep my detectors very clean. Um, so the, the 
actual smoke detector value is below the normal value. This blue value here is maintenance, so if your smoke alarm is above this blue line, you need to clean it. So this is a really great tool for uh, figuring out which detectors are dirty and need cleaning. This red bar at the top should be pretty self-explanatory. This is the alarm value. Okay, let's, let's actually test the smoke alarm now. Make sure the panel's still in silence. We'll take it off 3D for an easier view. And we will get some smoke. Okay. Well, it's a bit hard to see the screen at the same time. We will just turn off the bedside light quickly, if I can. Actually, I'll just try to do this one-handed. So I've just sprayed a tiny bit of smoke at the moment. And you should, yeah. There wasn't much that got in there, but you can see, oh, never mind. So you can see the value of the smoke alarm just shot up way past alarm value, but now it's coming down very quickly. Okay, so that wasn't enough to set it off. As far as the panel's concerned, the system is still normal. Um, but that gives you a good idea of just how sensitive the smoke alarms really are. But there is something in the smoke alarms called gating, which avoids false alarms, and that's why the value rose so much. Let's give it a little bit more now, and you should see the value really sustain its high level. That should be more than enough to set it off. Okay. Now it should rise again. So again, we're looking for that green bar. The panel's actually just gone into fire. You can see on the 3D view, that was just before when I sprayed the smoke, the value shot up way up to 3,000. And you can see how fast the smoke alarm clears. If there's not much airflow in a room, it's not gonna go down that fast. Um, but there's quite a bit of airflow in here. <clears throat> So that's just a really cool um, function of the software. If you're on the field and you're trying to program, well not program, but see the status of smoke alarms and see which uh, smoke alarms you need to clean. And you can also just click another address and monitor that. So this, if it works, it's going to master bedroom. And it takes a while for it to load. But you can see that's pretty much flat value. Okay, let's disconnect from the panel and unplug the plug. You can see that it's in fire. And it's not going to go off again because we saw the value drop. Unplug the cable. And now it's back to normal. Thanks for watching.